Happy 4th of July! Woohoo! Stick around. I'm gonna tell y'all some old fireworks stories. Hey y'all. Yeah, today, uh, 4th of July, I thought I'd tell y'all a few of my old fireworks stories. Some of the stuff we used to do, a couple of stories, you know. So this video, I'm uh, just getting started on it, and it's almost noon on the 4th of July. So I'm hoping I can get this out on the 4th of July. I may not. Well, I'm going to try to, though. It may be late on the 4th of July. We'll see. But I, I was thinking about this earlier, and I was like, I should tell some of these old stories. There was one time, I, I was probably about 12, 11, 12. There's a bunch of us boys right live right next door to each other. There's like four or five of us. We always did fireworks. Most of the time we... You know, blowed up stuff with them, a typical boy stuff, blowed up stuff, shot them at each other, all that kind of stuff. There was one time where it was 4th of July and we have pretty much shot up everything we had. But you know how with fireworks there's a lot of uh, duds. You say, you know, they don't go off or whatever. So we was like, hey, let's go around and gather up all the ones we can find, you know, and get the gunpowder out. We'll make one big firecracker. <laughs> so... That's what we did. We went around, all around the neighborhood, finding old firecrackers. And when we got back, got some like notebook paper, and we started dumping them all out there. And when we had a pile of gunpowder, I mean, I, I don't know how much it was. It was probably a couple ounces worth of gunpowder, which was a pretty good bit. We got a bunch of the fuses out, and we tied them together to kind of make one long fuse. So we got that stuck in there, and then we rolled it up. We knew we had to get it really tight, you know, because it wouldn't explode. So. We got that thing really, because we, I, I think we had done one before where we didn't get it really tight and it just basically just made a big fireball, which was cool looking, but, uh, you know, it didn't explode. So this time we got it real, real tight, you know, several layers of paper wrapped different ways, you know, tape in between. I mean, we had that sucker good, you know. A neighbor next door, he wasn't out there for this. I don't know what, I can't remember what the deal was, but... Uh, him and his two sisters, and we knew they always slept in late on summer vacation. We got that sucker rolled up, and I mean, it was, it was like a like a cigar or something. <laughs> anyway, we took that sucker, and we went over there behind his house, right there next to us. They had a, a, a glass, a sliding glass door. Luckily, we didn't put anything in this thing, so we just, we just it was just paper and gunpowder, but we set that thing out there about, I don't know, 10 feet from his back door. Lit that sucker and ran. <laughs> Man, that sucker went off. You need explosions. You need stuff going on. Yeah. Roll the candle. Step back a little bit. Yeet! That's what I'm talking about. It's beautiful. Beautiful. I'm looking for righteously kick ass. You know what we need? Gasoline. Yeah, jam that in the gas bucket. Yeah, let's shoot fireballs out. We gotta step way back. Ten cannons all at once. I mean, it was boom. It was so loud. Paper went everywhere. I mean, it was paper. We were picking up paper for days out there. Luckily, his mama wasn't home. I don't believe. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, they come running out the door. They didn't know what happened. Luckily, they didn't bust their window out. <laughs> didn't blow out anybody's windows, as far as I know. Yeah, that was the time we made a huge, gigantic bomb out of leftover gunpowder from leftover firecrackers. I have a brother. He's six years older than me. The kids that lived around there, we were all kind of the same age, and he was like the only one that was like older, so most of the time he kind of played with us, you know, growing up. So we always had uh, bottle rocket wars and stuff like that with each other. We decided that uh, we were going to make us kind of like a tank, because he could always, it just by himself, he could he, he could throw those those uh, bottle rockets, man, and nail us, you know, and... Uh, so we, we couldn't even get close to him usually, you know, so we like kind of like attack him, you know. So we decided to make this kind of like a tank. And basically we took some plywood and kind of built some sides on there. And we cut a little slit in the front uh, to where you could see out of it. And we and the only thing we could find as a good pipe was, I don't know, some of you might know what this is. It was on a weight set, you know, weights you lift up. They sometimes have this plastic tube on there. It's, oh, I don't know, three or four foot long that 
kind of spins on the on the bar. Uh, this is on those old cheap concrete weight sets, you know. Little plastic, you know, kind of spin as you lift the weights. Anyway, we decided we're going to use that as the barrel. So we get that, we get it in there. We, we tied a piece of uh, wood to where we could shove the uh, bottle rockets up from the back and one person would, would put that piece of wood over the end. We'd light it, shove it up in there. One person would put the piece of wood over and that would take off, you know, out the barrel. One person would aim it. So there was like four of us and we was get we got behind this thing and we had one guy, he was the aimer. All he did was sit there with that barrel right up against his ear where he, where he could look out that slit, see where to aim it at my brother. One guy was the lighter, one guy was the that put the you know, put the put the ball rocket in there, and one guy was the one that put the wood over the end of it to, you know, shove it up in there. So we'd get up there and we'd boy it was working great, man. We were pool man, we were aiming those things and he couldn't get us for nothing, you know, and uh, but we was uh, firing him. It was daily accurate, you know. But uh, we got up there, oh, most of the way, we were getting pretty close to him. He was chunking them at us, you know, he would just light them and throw them at us. We got up there, we lit that one, we, we lit that one. I remember it so well, because you, you could kind of, when they, when they would burn, before they take off, you could see through that tube, because it was kind of thin plastic. Of we were kind of stupid too. We were smart in some ways, but stupid in others. But you could see that thing. We see it, you know, usually you just see it burn and shwit take off, you know. Well, this one, we see it start burning and it started, it started going down the barrel a little ways, just barely moving. As soon as it got right up to, the other guy was looking out the barrel through the slit, it got right up next to his head. Boom, that sucker went off. Oh man, we all dove out of the thing. It, it, it was like it was like we got hit with a missile. An RPG hit us, man. And uh, but it was, it was it was one of our own. But uh, boy, it, he took off. Boy, I mean, he he couldn't hear for a while. I I, it didn't do nothing to major to him, as far as I know. <laughs> but maybe maybe today it does. But but back then, he was just it just hurt, you know, because it was so loud. And uh, uh, he got through the y'all think he hear for a few hours after that. But uh, but yeah, that was uh, another ridiculous, crazy story. There was this other time, this was, I was a little bit older. I think I was probably like maybe 17, 18 at this point. I knew a guy, he actually owned a fireworks dump company here. He was about the only one around. He'd literally go over there with $10 worth of, $10 worth of money, and I'd probably come out of there with $100 worth of stuff. <laughs> there was this one time, he, I went in there, and you know, I did my use, we got like $10, $15 worth of stuff, and he had this thing hanging on the wall. The thing was probably, I'm gonna say, I don't know if I can even get it on the screen here, but it, it was probably that big around, maybe bigger, I'm not sure, but it was huge. He had it hanging on the wall. It, it, he had it for like, it was like $75, $80 for that thing, is what it had on there. He's like, hey, you know, I bought the $10, $15 with stuff. He goes, hey, you want that thing? And I was like, what is it? He goes, I don't know. He goes, I got it, and nobody knows what it does. He goes, take it and try it. Tell me what it does. I said, okay. So he gave it to me. I guess this, this $80 deal, I didn't know, nobody knew what it was going to do. So we took it out there to my mom's house there in the subdivision. And, uh, you know, we'd popped all the rest of us. So I said, hey, let's do this last thing here. Let's see what it does. And we set it out there, in the, you know, right there next to the road. And uh, we lit that sucker. Basically what it did was it would make this really high-pitched whistling sound that would last about a few seconds. Then it would fire a shell or projectile up or whatever, but it wouldn't go up very high. It would only go up like 10 or 15 feet and go off. It basically sounded like a 12 gauge shotgun shell or closer maybe to a cannon, I'm not sure. And there was like, I don't I don't even remember, there was like 200 or 300 of these things in there. That And they would go off one of they would go boom, boom, boom. The sucker was so loud, the thing literally took about 15 minutes to finish. The whole neighborhood was out there, like, what in the heck is going on out here? It sounded like a friggin' war going on. <laughs> I couldn't shut it off. I couldn't do nothing with it because it was like, I mean, I didn't want to get near the thing. But it just kept going around. It was like, it was all these things were like in a circle in there. And it just kept going around and around in there until it finally got to the last one. I think the last one was like even a bigger one. But yeah, that thing was pretty awesome. But it was super loud, I, I, you know. 
I think I kind of pissed a few people off with that one. But one last story I was going to tell you. This was when I was, I think I was about 17 at this time, 17, 18. Uh, I know I was driving and stuff. I had a neighbor just down the road. Actually, there's two of them. They were twins. I couldn't stand them. They didn't like me either. Uh, they were really jerky. I mean, they were they were always doing stuff to annoy you. One time I was out there, one of them got out there and he started throwing bottle rockets toward toward my house. He lived about three or four doors down from me. He started throwing bottle rockets out there. I was just I was just like sitting out there on my driveway. He started chunking those bottle rockets at me one at a time. I told him I said, "Look, you better quit." You know. He just kept doing it. Of course, you know, I threatened him with whipping his butt and all that kind of stuff, and uh, he just kept doing it. Well, then he started throwing. He he would tie. And we would, we would always do this too. You know, when you bought bottle, bottle rockets back then, there was 12 of them in a little pack. And you could take and tie a bunch of the, uh, the fuses together, maybe about four or five of them, light it and chunk it with it all still packed together. And they would, they would all light. They would take off, I mean, generally in different directions, but kind of in the same direction. But, but it would just be like a massive 12 pack of, of bottle rockets coming at you. So anyway, he started doing that. I had enough finally, and I knew I had some of these regular big giant rockets in there, the ones that you go way, way high, you know, explode with a huge, uh, you know, display or whatever. I had a few of those left over. So I went, got my little steel pipe, went in there and got a few of those big bottle rockets. Went down, I just, I didn't even stop, he just still chunking at things, he didn't know what I was doing. I walked down there to my mailbox where I get a good shot at him, I laid that Laid that uh, pipe on the mailbox, lit one of them suckers, just put it down the pipe, and aimed it. And I swear that thing, I mean, woo, was screaming out of that thing, hits the road, bounces down the road a few skips, and uh, come up, hit right up under his mama's car, and exploded. I mean, it looked like it was, I mean, it was a big explosion, like up under the car. He jumped, that's where he was hiding it. He was, he did right up behind that car, and uh, he jumps, he's cussing, he's ranting and raving. I was like, I didn't even wait. I just slid another one down the pipe and lit it. And, woo, let that one go too. <laughs> that one went right up next to his house and blowed up in the bushes. I mean, he went running indoors. He's like, I'm telling my mom. I was like, okay, whatever. You know, so I just backed up my stuff and went inside. Never heard nothing else about it. But yeah, that was a time that I was uh, blowing up the neighbor kid. <laughs> I actually got in a fight with that kid one time. Actually, two or three. I, well, one time he was picking on somebody and. I told him to stop. He wouldn't, and so I went down there and I just kind of shoved him out of the way. I don't remember. It wasn't like a fist fight or nothing. And then there was another time when I was actually dating my ex-wife now, but my, my soon-to-be wife. He was actually working at a fireworks stand. One of these little tiny ones. You, that one was side of the road. It didn't have much in there. We pulled up at a store and he get out. He starts talking sh some crap, you know. I just went over. I got in it, walked up inside that trailer he was in. You know, I just got up to him and I just thumped him as hard as I could right in the middle of the chest and uh, basically told him what was going to happen if he kept it up anymore and that kind of ended his little, little pickings or whatever he wanted to call it you know he, he thought he was bad but he wasn't really nothing so uh, like I always say he thought he was a hot turd on a see hey, oh no I, well I, it actually you think you're hot hit on a stick but you're nothing but a cold turd on a twig I may have to beat that out anyway that described him pretty much <laughs> That's all I'm going to do with this video because i got to make it kind of short. Gotta, I'm going to try to edit this thing and uh, get it out today. If you like this video, uh, hit that like button. Yeah, hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed. Be sure to hit that bell thing that goes dang, dang, dang. And become a hawker. I hope you all have a good, happy uh, 4th of July or what's left of it. Hopefully when this thing goes out, it may not be it may be over with. I can't promise it, but if it, uh, it'll, be, it'll be a happy 5th of July. Whatever, you know. Okay, so I'm out of here. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.